First at five tonight, a man accused of being a serial rape sus suspect is tonight in police custody. Brandon Young was arrested at his home in Middleburg. On your side's Nick Perot joins us now and Nick, a family member actually played a role in connecting him to the assaults. Well, yes, Anthony, that's right. Brandon Rung Young's DNA was not in Jacksonville Sheriff's Office system, but Jacksonville Sheriff's Office say they were actually able to use what's known as familial DNA. That is DNA of a close relative, which is what led investigators to it. Investigators were able to determine that each case involved a similar method of operation. Sheriff Mike Williams said investigators found a similar pattern between 2006 and 2009. A man would meet his victims in social settings, sometimes parking lots, sometimes asking for sexual acts, and he'd commit a sexual assault. It took years before police, though, would identify Brandon D'Angelo Young. Young had not been arrested or convicted at that point. His family members were, so having that close connection, again, doesn't make him the suspect, but it gave us a person of interest and a lead in this case. Using Florida's database for those convicted of misdemeanors and felonies, investigators got a hit for Young's brother and used that DNA to issue a court order to get a sample of Brandon Young's blood. That sample matched the DNA profile of the suspect from the cases in 2006 to 2009. In 2006, Young was working as a certified nurse assistant at Baptist Health on an as-needed basis. The hospital says he was employed for a year and suspended after allegations surfaced. The hospital does not believe any of the victims are tied to patients at the hospital. Baptist adding in a statement, while we already follow industry best practice for employee background screening, we are using this as an opportunity to review that process to ensure it is as effective as possible. It was the first time the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office matched DNA using a relative's DNA to a case. In total, the DNA is tied to at least three cases, but the Sheriff's Office is looking at eight potential victims. As the Sheriff said, the success really underscores the value of the sexual assault kit initiative, um, which we call SOCI, and a grant by the federal government. And again, back out here live, that announcement was made inside here in Jacksonville, but we are told that Young remains in jail in Clay County. Downtown Jacksonville, Nick Perot, First Coast News on your side. Nick, thank you. Now, following the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office press conference this morning about that sexual assault arrest, we ask about a very important issue impacting the city of Jacksonville. We ask about homicide. So earlier this week, the city hit triple digits, marking the 100th homicide on August 12th. That's the most homicides by August 12th in the past 14 years. So we're on your side tonight asking the tough questions to our city leaders about the violence. And so today we spoke with Sheriff Mike Williams about what the city's doing to combat the crime and also about the preventative measures put in place like Shot Spotter. Shot Spotter uh, gives us a lot of data to help us, you know, really nail down on when we should have people in the right place at the right time, that type of thing. So presence is a big part of that. There's a lot of different things that work together. There's not one thing that you do to say, hey, this is what works to prevent and this is how you, you know, this is how you follow up. So it's a matter of putting all these things together and then letting them work together for a while. And this is a question we sometimes hear from you. What is Shot Spotter? Well, the system is used to locate gunfire and it also sends the location to officers. JSO says this helps them get to the scene quicker after an incident and it pinpoints the locations where there is more gun violence, allowing them to put more officers in a particular area. Well, the city of Jacksonville has also put nearly $800,000 to a new program. It's called Cure Violence. So it's something city officials say will help reduce crime. The question though is, is it actually working? So here is how the program is designed to work. Individuals head out into the community to help prevent retaliations, resolve community conflicts, and move others onto a path free of committing crimes. It's also offering job and education opportunities to help prevent people from joining the criminal lifestyle. The sheriff says this program needs more time in order to be effective. We've got to continue to work and stay focused. Uh, it, this is the path that we've chosen. We firmly believe in it. There's evidence-based success all around the country with this. We've just got to keep working on it and, and driving through. So one other note from our interview with the sheriff today. He told us that violent crimes are up 9% this year here in Jacksonville. So what will it take to tackle the violent crime in Jacksonville? For now, it remains to be seen, but we will always be on your side pressing our elected officials for answers. And it's also important for our community to help solve these crimes impacting our community. So if you ever have a tip to help in an investigation, you can call Crime Stoppers. That phone number 866-845-TIPS. Remember, you can remain anonymous. You're also eligible for a cash reward.